Oftentimes, video game developers get a little too much into the craft of it all. They treat it as a job, just like how you and I would treat our 9 to 5s. So, if a developer wants to flex their creative muscles, what should they do? Why? Join a game jam, of course! You've probably heard of game jams before and probably wonder what they are. So I, Professor Dale, professional video game boy, will break down what a game jam is and what they're good for in this episode of IGN Decoded. Okay, alright. Now, what is a game jam? To answer this question, let's check in with our guest for the day. Returning guest Sean Beck, the chapter coordinator of the International Game Developers Association of Malaysia, Gwen Guo, the chairperson of the Singapore Games Association, and Hafiz Azman, the creator of Rhythm Doctor and A Dance of Fire and Ice. What is a game jam? It's basically locking, um, <laughs> locking up a bunch of developers, typically about 40 to 100 people in a room, uh, give them a theme, give them some constraints, and let creativity flow and hopefully we'll see some amazing projects, ideas and you know some great imagination and ingenuity come come to life. A game jam is a hackathon where within a short period of time spanning between 24 hours to a week where developers will have to make a game that is based on a theme that is revealed on the first day of the game jam and it may <laughs> or may not have prizes but it is nonetheless a time for you to test uh, what you can really do within a short period of time. It, it's a bunch of people deciding to get together to make a game in a set period of time. Essentially, a game jam is a hackathon for game developers. A jam session where programmers, artists, and even music composers all come together to make a game in a short amount of time. You'll be surprised by the amazing games that have come from game jam. You've probably heard of a couple of these games, you know, things like, oh, I don't know, Goat Simulator, Surgeon Simulator, and Super Hot. All of these games began life as a short game jam experience before evolving into a full game. So how many game jams have you joined, you think? I think I've joined about three or four. I can't really remember. I took part in Global Game Jam and I've been taking part like for a few years already. Almost every year I would take part in Global Game Jam. And uh, myself, I've organized a couple of game jams as well. Um, I think it's four by now. So the first one I did was with Ludum Dare. So actually, Sean was the one that invited me to the first one, uh, Ludum Dare in 2014. So I made a dance of fire and ice back then. And then since then, I've had three more game jams that were part of the level up C game jam. So that was like a yearly thing for Malaysians. We all met together and then we did one every year. And I've, I've done that for three years now. Yeah, and also honestly haven't kept count, but I think we're close to, I mean, it's close to 20 personally. I've joined to close to 20 game jams uh, in the last 10 years uh, in my, wow. of my game, yeah, game dev career. <laughs> Some years I've joined like five jams, four or five jams, and you know, totally drained me out. <laughs> but wow. I enjoy it. I enjoy every single one of them. I've organized game jams pretty much every year. See game jams, Ludum Dares, uh, and also assisted with the Global Game Jam uh, and a couple of other small little jams along the way. So yeah, it's amazing to think that the next generation of indie games are all Game Jam games right now. Game Jams began life in 2002 by game developers Chris Hacker and Sean Barrett with the Indie Game Jam. That's why game developers from across the US will meet up and create something from scratch based on a certain theme. Soon, more and more events like the Global Game Jam and Ludum Dare sprung up, which all became really popular thanks to using the internet to share these games worldwide. In 2015 alone, the Global Game Jam reported over 28,000 participants in 518 jam sites across 78 countries, which resulted in 5,438 games being produced. Woo! That's a lot of games. These days, it seems that game jams happen every week, 
with each I.O. having a dedicated calendar just for people to keep track of all these game jams. This is again thanks to the nature of online platforms like H.I.O. where creators can easily share their games online for everyone to play all over the world. The current pandemic has since made physical game jams a thing of the past. That is, until the world returns to a semblance of normalcy in the future. So the first one, Ludum Dara, that was a solo game jam. So that was really cool because it was the first time I was working on a game together with other people who were also working on their own games. So we could show our games to each other during the process. We could um, give tips to each other or help because that was my first time using Unity. So I remember like I was able to ask for help from anyone in the game jam at the time. And for the C game jam, we did this thing where Sean would run. So, so Sean's the organizer of the game jam and he would randomly pair us up into teams. So I was working with people I'd never actually never talked to before um, for each of those game jams. And that, and that was really cool as well, because uh, number one, like, you know, we make new friends. But also as someone who does solo development a lot, it was really nice to have an experience of having working in a team. Um, one thing good about being online is that, yeah, I can help mentor people in Indonesia, Philippines, like I did last year. So the amount of people who can join is a lot bigger. What do you lose from not having the game jams be in one place? Well, you don't get to eat food together. You don't get to... M maybe there's less of a chance of serendipity. Like you don't walk around and see other teams' games. Like there's less of a sense of community in that sense because you don't physically see everyone working around you and you're not able to just walk up to someone else's table and say, hey, what are you working on? Like, um, do you guys need any music or something, something like that? You know, sometimes team members can help each other. That's less possible when it's all online. But I think it still works. So Ludum Dare has always been online, has always been remote. And well, that works pretty well. So since pandemic, we've, we switched online and everything's been on Discord right now. We, we ushered all the developers into a Discord server, divide them to channels and they work from different channels. It's a different feeling, definitely. It's not as fun because you don't really get to like scurry around, walk around and peek at other people's work as they are they're working. You don't have, get to go to lunch with uh, your teammates and learn about them and the industry. And it, it's generally, it's not as fun and exciting, of course, but I think at the end, the result, result is still the same. We still project it onto a screen somewhere. Um, in this case, we do it on Facebook Live and everyone can still see and uh, still comment at it. We still get a, a lot of laughs from the comments, which is great. It's it's definitely different. Um, I'd say it's still fun, although we hope that one day we, you know, we can return back to the things, uh, the way things were with pizza. So why should people join Game Jam? Are there prizes to be won? Glory to behold? Well, not really. Most people join Game Jams just to have fun, to meet new people and learn some lessons along the way. So, um, there are quite a number of reasons why I like it. I think game jams, right, is especially good for people that have been in the industry for like a few years or so and pursuing commercial endeavors for the games that we do. So I think running a game studio has to be a sustainable business still. So that means your game needs to be commercial. You know, it has to come from a perspective that, okay, this game is going to earn me some money. You know, I got to keep my studio afloat, etc. And I think game jams is like a perfect way for you to release all of that expectations of your game and to really do what means what is meaningful and personal to you the whole spirit of game jams is like you're really supposed to feel free and really use that time to see what you're capable of without that fear of things like grades or like whether you're making money from it whether you are a fresh graduate who's trying to push yourself to see what you can achieve in a short amount of time or whether you are a burnt out game developer who just wants to create games that don't have those kind of commercial expectations I think there's really something for everyone at the game jam uh. Um, if I could list them out, I'd say like, number one, they let you meet new people in, in, in the industry. Uh, number two, you get to prototype proof of concepts together. And many times with games, you can't really know the, how well a game is going to be if you just talk about it, right? Like you can have a game design document, but usually the point at which you see if a game idea will work is when you prototype it. Game devs are, are the perfect vehicle for prototyping games because that's, that's what it is, right? You have a certain time, like two days or something, or maybe a week, and you're working on something, a, a new idea that you haven't worked on before. And and number three, well, if you're new to the industry, it's a really good way to get eyes on your game. Because if you make a game outside of game jams, it's usually hard to get people to play. But for example, for me, for the first, uh, for Dance of Fire and 
nice because it was part of the Ludum Dark Game Jam. Um, what happens is that they have a point system where they reward you for playing other people's ga- other people's games. So a lot a lot of people played my game at the time when when I knew nobody in the industry. A lot of people played my game. More people played it than they would have if if, if I had tried to make the prototype outside of the game jam. So yeah, I think those are my three reasons why it's really good for the industry. But we have so many game jams to choose from, which ones should people join? How do we know which ones to pursue and which ones are worth waiting for? Yeah, if you can't make C Game Jam 2021, I'm also trying to host the next Ludum Dare sometime in October. There is a date for it, I just don't remember what it is right now. And that's one of the oldest uh, online game jams that's been happening for quite a number of years, I think 20 years. And that's a little different from C Game Jam 20, 2021. Um, there are several formats to it. Uh, you can join in a team. But what I like about Ludum Dare is that there is a another segment for the jam. It's called Compo, which is a sort of a competition, but there's no prizes. It's just a ranking where the community actually votes each other's games in terms of like gameplay, design, uh, sound, humor, and tone. And what, what's cool about that is that you can join it as a solo dev where you, you're you really totally on your own. And we've, me and a group of uh, friends, we've been joining this Ludum Dare game jam a lot for the past 10 years. And typically when we join, we don't join, we join as a group, but we don't join as a team. We join as individuals and uh, it's really fun because you get to see what each other has made at the end of the day. Story time. In preparation for this video, I personally joined a game jam to get a feel for it myself. On a whim, I joined the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam, made by the popular YouTuber who does videos on game design. The ultimate prize? For your game jam creation to be featured in Game Maker's Toolkit's roundup video. Though, that can be a little tough when there are 20,000 participants and over 5,700 entries all made within the span of 48 hours. In the end, I managed to join a fledgling crew of game developers from North America and Southeast Asia. This ragtag team had to work between two time zones and we made it work. Boy, howdy did we make it work. With the team this year being joined together, our team came up with Pile Up, a puzzle game where you must control robotic appliances and escape a junkyard. The cool thing is, we made it to the top 2% of all games rated, which means that it was a pretty popular game from the jam. Sadly, Pile Up did not make the roundup video this time around. But hey, for a first timer and someone who's kinda out of the world of game developers, that's not too bad, right? When we follow that typical route of being in the games industry, you know, like, oh, okay, we go and get a games education, we go to college or like polytechnic, get a diploma in game design, a degree in games programming, right? Like, we are not exposed to a lot of aspects of what makes a game that's an art form, right? A lot of us in schools, we are trained to follow, okay, this is what the industry needs, uh, whether it's triple A or whether you're starting up, you need to have blah, blah, blah skills and et cetera, et cetera. And I think we are missing out some really important components like for example what was fun about that heritage game jam was that we had people who were academics who were sociologists psychologists people that were writers traditional writers people that wrote for books you know poets actually come and join the game jam and I feel like if you pair them up with people who are familiar with the game engine and games in general right you can come up with some pretty powerful narratives right there so actually in SGGA that's precisely what we are trying to encourage is people people from different industries, whether you're from the arts, whether you're an activist, whether you are from tech to actually come and work on games. Uh, and I think game jams are really a good way to test how you all uh, group yourselves up and communicate and fill the gaps between each other's skill sets. Uh. Well, I think it's different for a lot of people. Uh, and game jam has a, a, some significance to me personally. I came into game development as an artist knowing absolutely nothing about game development. So game jams is sort of a, a way for me to kind of prove myself. Um, because as an artist, you you hear about, you know, having to, the, the only way to get good is practice, 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 right? But as a game developer, I, I've never had any academic background in, in game development. I had to learn it all myself. So one way to get good in, in game development, like, like drawing or being an artist, is you have to get 10,000 crappy drawings out of the way, right? 
one way I saw to get better at making games is actually, you know, make more games. A lot of people are stuck in, in a long development cycle for game development. It's, it's typically months to years. And sometimes they don't even see it shipped. And if you've been in game development that long, two, three years, it's kind of draining and sometimes you, you lose sight or, or vision for your game. And sometimes just having something small that you can put out in the world just, you know, changes your perspective, refreshes you a bit, and then, you know, gives you some perspective on like, what's wrong with your current game? What's wrong with your previous game and how to improve on that. Sometimes you don't really learn something and this is from the words of a really great game developer in Malaysia that I admire, uh, Yi Wei from Kurechi. Um, that was the talk that he made about how you don't really learn anything from your previous game until you reapply it to the next game. And I see that happening in game jams. The more game jams I've been a part of, you know, I, I learn from it and apply it to a new project. I start a new project and I learn from it. That's how you also validate your ideas. So yeah, as a non-game developer, it was a crazy time to be grouped up with strangers and, and make something out of nothing, just from scratch. It was crazy in two days. But overall, I had a blast. I had a great time and I personally recommend anyone to do it, regardless of skill level. Go out there, have fun and join a game jam. What advice would you give to those who are starting out their game development journey? For me, I went into game development just because I wanted to make Rhythm Doctor. So it was like a singular game motivated game development, if that makes sense. Whereas I know other people who go into game development, not because they have a game they want to make, but because they just want to go into game development first. You know, and these people will go into universities. And what I'm trying to say is that my situation is kind of specific. But if your motivation to get into games is just to make a singular game, then yeah, just, just throw yourself into it. Try to make a small prototype first. Try to get people to play it because having people play your game is going to give you a lot of motivation to continue. I don't think we'd have continued working for Rhythm Doctor for so long if we just worked on it for like seven years and then shown, shown people the game, right? What we could do is first, I made a prototype in like a couple of weeks and then I could show my friends. And then I got my artist Winston to join me. And then we worked on a Flash demo for a while. I think two years later, we released the demo on Flash and then lots of people played it. So having the cycle of releasing game, even even if you work on just one game for a long time. So, you know, some sometimes people say, don't work on a big game at the start. You know, you should start with Pong or you should start with, you know, a simple game as possible. But I don't think that's true. Like like the first game I ever worked on was, was Rhythm Doctor, but rather my advice would be work on something that you can show people fairly often. So you can work on a big project, but it, as long as you split it up into small chunks that you can show people often, then that's fine. I think for those that are just starting out in the industry, right, I think it's really important to get a sense of perspective from other industries. It's great that we form friendships and we hang out with a lot of our game dev friends, you know, sometimes we, we like to share our ideas, you know, uh, check out what each other is doing and stuff. That's great. But the games industry is free, is not an easy industry to be in and it's very easy to feel like, oh, you know, there's, there's all these things happening, you know, especially all the articles and all the reports like crunch culture and then like harassment cases and blah, blah, blah. Blah, it's like all these things it's like it feels very heavy especially if you are stuck within a certain cycle of social media and it's very easy to get affected by all these things and yes these are very important issues and a lot of times they are systemic issues that sometimes we are powerless to change and especially when you just graduated you're like oh my god you know what am I going to face in this games industry but I do think it's important to uh, speak to people outside from the games industry to remind yourself why you are in the games industry and why you enjoy it so an example is like a Recently, like I've been talking to a lot of people from the art sector and the academic sector, and the way they see games is like so optimistic and it's really really positive. And especially when they're when when they come from an angle that's not entirely about like commercialization, you know, it's not entirely about monetization. It's about really games for good, games for change, you know, games that promote um some of the things that they believe in. And sometimes we just need to hear some of these things to realize that maybe our perspective of what games can be is is like can be even broader. So I feel like we enter the industry, just have that mindset we don't know what we don't know. So we need to expose ourselves to um a lot of other industries out there, different disciplines, you know, see how people not from the game industry are using games to do stuff. And I think that will feed back in all that kind of negative energy that's sometimes coming from the games industry. Lah. So just to keep your energy and passion up lah, and remind yourself why you're here. That's it for this episode of IGN Decoded. Please let us know if you've joined Game Jams before or if you will after this video. As always, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok for more gaming content. My name is Dale and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.